Oh boy, you're really going to get sick of my voice tonight. It is the third night in a row of rotations. And yes, it's Mrs. Pearson again. Tonight, we are going to be going over rotations that are 180 degrees about the origin. I know I'm excited too. I can't wait for it. So tonight, by the end of the night, we are hoping that you will be able to draw the rotation of a given figure on a coordinate plane and determine the properties preserved. In other words, what is kept the same about the figures. Let's move on. Oh, there we go. In a rotation, an object is turned, and that's what we've been discussing the last couple of nights and in class. Tonight, we're going to be focusing on rotating a figure 180 degrees about the origin. This is a little bit different. If we're here to look at this picture right here on this coordinate grid, and we're looking at point M, and we're looking at point M prime, notice that it almost looks like they're directly opposite each other, which is hoping, we're hoping what you're going to get out of a 180 degree rotation. It's going to be almost completely on the other side of where it started. Notice that it says again that it's 180 degrees about the origin. What does that mean? Well, here is my origin of 0 comma 0. If it's 180 degrees about the origin, that means if I take point M and I pivot it around 0, 0, it's going to end up 180 degrees on the other side. Notice if I connect point M to my origin and I connect point M prime to my origin, it maintains the same distance from the origin. Notice the type of angle that is formed when I do a 180 degree rotation. Oh, it's a 180 degree angle or a half a circle. So really it's going to be kind of almost directly on the other side of where it starts. Let's start looking at this in closer detail. Right now we're going to first look at the rule. We already realized where it should be located thinking about a 180 degree angle. But now let's think about how can we take a point, which is point M here at negative 1, 4, and create point M prime after that 180 degree rotation. Well, this is what you do. This is how I think about 180 degree rotations. I think about kids in school. At the beginning of eighth grade, a lot of times kids are kind of immature, you know, they're still growing up, that kind of, that kind of thing. But by the end of the year, they've made a 180 degree change. Have you ever heard your mom say that to you? You have made a 180 degree change in your attitude about this. What does that mean? It means completely opposite. You're opposite of what you were from the beginning of the year to the end of the year at eighth grade. You're more mature, you can handle things better, you do better in school, we hope. So let's take a look at how that applies to these points. If I look at M at negative 1, 4, and I look at M prime, which is 1, negative 4, notice what happened to each coordinate. If I start with X comma Y, notice as I start with X at negative 1, it became a positive 1, or the complete opposite of the way it started. So if it started at negative 1, the opposite of negative 1 would be bam, positive 1. So the x coordinate becomes the opposite of how it started. That's what this means. I'm going to change the sign on the x coordinate. Notice the y coordinate. It started at a positive 4 and ended at a negative 4. Huh, funny. It also became the opposite of what it started as. It started as a positive, it ended as a negative. So that means I'm also going to change the sign of the y coordinate. So let's go down here to our rule and let's go ahead and circle these negatives because it doesn't mean the numbers will become negative. It means on both the x and the y, I will change the sign. on both coordinates. So what that means is this. If it started as a positive, it'll end as a negative. If it started as a negative, it will end as a positive. 
Let's go ahead and apply this rule and see how it works with figures. All right. Hopefully you remember this figure because we've been using the same one. Now we're going to make a 180 degree rotation about the origin. Well, once again, here's my origin. Oop, sorry about that. And 180 degrees, if I looked at point O and I drew a straight line and I knew 180 degrees look like this, Bam! Guess which quadrant it's going to be in. If I'm just visualizing, you should be thinking to yourself it's going to end up in quadrant one. Well, let's check this out. Yes, I'm in school. Yes, the bell just rang. Sorry about that. So now let's check it out and see if it's true. If I start with point M down here, which we might even have memorized that it starts at negative 7, negative 9, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write this in up here, negative 7, negative 9. And my rule states that I'm going to change the sign on both the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate. So if I'm going to change the x-coordinate and it started as a negative 7, it will now become a positive 7. If I'm going to change the coordinate on the y, if I'm going to change the sign on the y-coordinate, from a negative 9, it will now become a positive 9. So remember, I'm taking each coordinate and I'm changing the sign on both of them. So let's see if I end up in quadrant 1 for point M. M becomes, after the rotation of 180 degrees about the origin, 7, 9. Ooh, look at that. And that will be M prime. 7, 9. So far, so good. I'm in quadrant 1. Let's take a look at n. n is at negative 9, negative 3. I'm going to go on over here and write it. Negative 9, negative 3. After a 180 degree rotation, I change the sign, or each sign becomes its opposite. So here the x coordinate, which is negative 9, becomes a, bam, positive 9. The y coordinate started as a negative 3 now becomes its opposite, which is a positive 3. So n prime has to be located at 9, comma 3. And that is n prime. 9, comma 3. Oh, sorry about that big giant 1. It looks like n1. So hopefully you can remember that's a prime notation. Let's look at o. O is at negative 2, comma negative 3. Let's write that in over here. Remember, under 180 degree rotation about the origin, I'm going to change the sign on both the x and the y. So this negative 2 becomes a 2. And this negative 3 becomes a positive 3. Let's hope we're in the first quadrant. Oh, let's hope. Oh, it looks like we are. Oh my gosh, this is so making my day right now. So we are now O prime 2 comma 3. Let's look at our last coordinate, which is P. And that is at negative 4, negative 9. We're going to go ahead and write that in over here. Negative 4, negative 9. Our rule states that I'm going to change the X coordinate. Sorry about the bell. And I'm going to be... Oh, boy. And I'm going to be changing the Y coordinate as well. So negative 4 becomes a, bam, positive 4. Negative 9 becomes a, bam, positive 9. You can also think to yourself, hmm, they both have to be positive if I'm going to end up in quadrant 1. And if they're not, I did something wrong. So let's go ahead and graph P prime. 4, comma, 9. Oh, gee. Sorry about that. There it is. And that is P prime. Oh, it didn't show up again. And that is a 4, comma, 9. Now we're going to go ahead and connect those points. Ooh, ooh, there it goes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That is totally looking good. Now let's go ahead and double check to make sure some of our um, images are 180 degrees about the origin. Once again, when I went ahead and I highlighted 0, 0 down here, notice when I connect O, sorry about this line, to 0, 0, this length has to be the same as this length. Would you agree? 
they are the same. Notice I have created a 180 degree angle between the two points through the origin. So it applies to every part of my rule. A 180 degree angle is formed, it's about the origin, and it's in quadrant one, which is the 180 degrees away from where I started. Perfect, it works. Let's talk about what's preserved. Remember, this is a rigid motion. Rotations are rigid motions. And preserved means what is kept? What do we keep the same about the figures? First thing you should all remember is that the distance is preserved. Lengths of segments are the same. In other words, line segments map two line segments. This should be getting old by now. You should all be knowing this. Which means, let's take a look at B, I'm sorry, B to C. Let's take a look at B to C here on my figure on the coordinate plane. If I start at B, I go one, two, three units to go from B to C. Let's check and see if that's true on B prime to C prime. Oh, if I could do it correctly, that would even help, wouldn't it? We'll start here. One, two, three units. Oh, bam, it works my line segments map to line segments because they are corresponding parts. Angle measures remain the same. In other words, angles map to angles, which means angle A prime B prime C prime right here is the same as angle A, B, C right here. They remain the same. Because my line segments map to line segments, my perimeter or my distance around remains the same. Because my line segments map to line segments and my angles map to angles, my area has to stay the same or the amount of space taken up by the figure. Now let's take a look at orientation. Funny because I changed the sign on both the X and the Y, will the orientation stay the same? Well, I hope so. It was a rigid motion. Let's check it out. If I were to come up here and I were to look, let me, I don't know what happened. Okay, sorry about that. I don't know what just happened to this. It all just kind of went away. So let me try to get back to my last screen. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Okay, let's take a look at these over here. I know if I go from A to B, oh my word, that was such a mess up. I'm so sorry, my friends. If I go from A to B, B to C, and then C goes back to A. Now let's look at my image. I start at A prime and go to B prime. B prime goes to C prime. And C prime goes to A prime. So, bam, they all match up. My orientation stays the same. That is a rigid motion. All right, we're going to be using 180 degree rotations tomorrow in class. Hopefully, you guys learned something and we'll be able to apply it. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a great night. Bye-bye.